Good day to you one and all. This is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Today I'm talking about Iggy Pop because uh, he has postponed two shows after croaking his way through a concert in Athens. So I'm going to react to that. That's why I'm not wearing a shirt. Um, I should also point out that I've just been to the dentist and I had two um, fillings unexpectedly, so half of my face has no sensation. It has no sensation. I don't know why I'm saying it in that voice, but it's the truth. It has no sensation. Um... I'm going to go and get the guitar as well. <laughs> new surroundings, new danger. New episode. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Here we are in my new YouTube studio. It's exciting, isn't it? I, I do need to get a stand for that, though. Something close by, you know. I think it's going to be okay. Right, I, I, so anyway, Iggy Pop has been forced to postpone two shows on his current European tour due to uh, a problem with his voice, which is in inverted commas. Last week, Iggy released the following statement regarding the Mantova concert. He said, um, if you were there, you know I croaked my way through my last show in Greece and my voice is still recovering. I must postpone my next show in Mantova, Italy. I have not taken this decision lightly. I love my fans, but I must protect my voice. I'm so sorry, but I'll come back and make it up to you. So... You know what I think? I think that um, there are people in the world who are unable to accept that they've lost the ability to do something. And they sort of exist in a kind of denial and they think, well, it'll be okay if we get, you know, Richard, the keyboard player, or Tarquin, the uh, bassoonist, like in between bassoon parts to you know bolster what I would normally be doing as a lead vocalist, um, and I think they just carry on uh, belligerently, just eking out a career regardless of how bad it sounds when they sing, and then you get people who just have like a a, a momentary you know health issue that's that's affecting the voice, and then that it's that's much easier. You just say. I'll come back soon. It's a postponement as opposed to a cancellation. So I don't suspect that when I watch this footage, I'm going to see anything that looks like a long-term problem. Again, I'm not a doctor. I, I am a doctor, really. I'm not a doctor. I am. But, um, you know, I do have some experience in this area, and I'd love to be able to try and make, an, I don't know, just an estimation as to whether this is a long-term or a, a blip. Um, anyway, so the thing about Iggy Pop is he's 75 years old. 75 years old. Um, designated the godfather of punk, he was the vocalist and lyricist for the proto-punk uh, band, The Stooges, who were formed in 1967. So that's 55 years of singing. That's a long time, isn't it? Um, and a lot of strain and repeated uh, abuse, really. He began his solo career by collaborating with Bow Bowie or Bowie, uh, on the 1977 albums The Idiot and Lost for Life. Throughout his career, he is well known for his outrageous and unpredictable stage antics, poetic lyrics and distinctive voice. He was one of the first performers to do a stage dive and popularised the activity. I would have called that a stooge dive. Anyway, um, although his solo records were more commercial than those of his 1960s and 70s band, The Stooges, he never broke through into the mainstream. But he's kind of like one of those iconic peripheral characters that everybody sees as a, a benchmark, especially in performance terms. I mean, I'll give you one example. We, we were on tour in America a few years ago, and um, we played in, this, um, played in this place in Chicago, and the... Uh, and I'd done some silly stuff before, and the guy who um, uh, books the shows was a little bit concerned that I might do it again. They're always worried, um, aren't they, if something litigious might happen, like, for example, if I did a stage dive and landed on a child's head, which I would never do, you know. But, you know, they worry about that sort of thing. So uh, he said to me, what, what, don't do what Iggy did. Last week he climbed up that, um, I don't know, the speaker cabinets and then ran around the balcony and climbed down the other side. And I thought, well, <laughs> if Iggy's doing that, then I've got to do it now. He can't show up a week later and then not do that. He's, he's one of those guys that raises the bar, you know. So I thought, well, maybe I'll be the guy that raises the bar. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll just jump off the balcony. You know, I'll go up there, go around the balcony, and then jump off. It's the only way to beat him. I did that, and then there was a sort of brass partition thing 
amongst the why is why did they put those things there and i hit my chest on it and i think i might have broken a couple of ribs so i was definitely uh in a lot of pain for the rest of the tour. Um, I don't blame Iggy for that, of course. That's my own stupid fault for trying to keep up with him. But he is a legend. And even at this age, he's doing stuff that... Uh, slightly younger people like myself can't do, you know? His solo album, The Idiot, has been cited as a major influence on a number of post-punk, electronic and industrial artists, including Depeche Mode, who I love, Nine Inch Nails, who I fucking love, and Joy Division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's have a look at the uh, footage and then we'll see what's going on. What do you reckon? Yeah. So this thing I'm watching is The Passenger. Most of that song, in fact, maybe all of the song is just those four chords. So it's cool because he's, he's doing a bit of performance. He's walking around he's taking a drink and he's getting himself ready you can you know the taking a drink part is the bit that seems a little bit off really i mean if knowing now what we know about this performance i mean that's probably him sort of bracing himself to sing something that he knows he's not going to be able to do very well um i feel like um what what i'm going to be looking for when i hear him sing is if there's sort of some unpredictability in in the, the way the sort of pitching is because um if it's something like a pharyngitis or just like a sore throat or whatever, then what's going to happen is he'll probably like be croaking and it won't sound very powerful and you'll see that he's reluctant to sort of put anything through it because it's so painful. Um, but if it's a polyp, it could be, you know, if it's some, something that would need a surgical intervention to remove it, then it's probably going to be something like he'll be singing and then a note that you don't expect to happen or an overtone or, or an undertone or just something that beyond his control will occur and then you'll you'll that, that's a that's a good indicator like so, some people are sort of just talking and then they sort of squeak off like that and then you know their voice just completely changes without any warning and they obviously have no control over it and sometimes that's because of uh, an actual sort of physical um growth that's uh, causing causing that but it, you know the other thing is the thing i'm hoping to see is a man with a sore throat basically <laughs> Look at that, pirouetting, writhing, um, it's just brilliant. I mean, 75 years old, just just to give you an example, my mother is 78 years old, 79 years old now, and um, she was a rock and roller, she loved to dance, kept herself fit, but now she's obliged to use, um, admittedly, a, a very tricked out uh, mobility scooter that kind of is all chromed up and it's got black bits on it. It looks like uh, it might be made by the, the Harley Davidson mobility scooter company. Or, you know, she's like an easy rider thing. She's, you know, she's up, she's like this going through town. Um, but, you know, look at this guy. He's 75 and he's just shows you, doesn't it? He's, uh, he's really looked after himself uh, despite, you know, Perhaps some of his uh, earlier trespasses. <coughs> so the the band's rotating uh, those chords, uh, just waiting for him to begin. Really, um, they've been indoctrinated, I think, with the age-old piece of truism that you must always follow the singer um, and whoever the MD of uh, his collective at the moment. He's, he's doing exactly that. They're just waiting for him to prepare himself and get ready. Yeah, he wants to get some reaction from the audience, which will, you know, I think he's doing that not to disguise what, what's about to come out of his mouth, but I think he's probably doing that to, you know, get some inspiration. Watch this. I am a passenger And I ride and I ride Okay, it's hard to tell at the moment. It could be either. Okay, now it sounds like he's he's in pain. He's it's, it's trying not to push too much air through because it's obviously excruciating when it's like that. And I mean, the hardest thing to about watching this is um, that it's heartbreaking to 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 see somebody else in this situation. But a lot of singers have been there before, where you know, there's a a room, maybe there's a few thousand people in the room. They're all expecting to hear a particular sound come out of your voice. And you know that you're not going to be able to do that. 
and all those eyes are on you, all those ears are on you, and you have to do it. You know, the song started. There's no option to bottle out, really. You've got to go and do it. Um, and so it's kind of like he's delayed his intro, I think, into into this song. But I don't think it's going to make it any easier for him. It's really hard to watch. No, it's, it's getting really croaky, but it's actually the pitching's not too bad. Okay, it sounds like there's some information in there. I mean, again, I'm not a doctor. I am a doctor. I'm not a doctor. So I'm not obviously qualified to, to assess anything from... I mean, I, I, would, I would need to have a look at the vocal cords themselves before I make any assessment. I'm sure he's going to go and see the best specialists that there are available to us. And those guys really know what they're doing, you know. But I think just by the sound of it, it I reckon this is, um, this is one of those things where he's just acknowledge that he's not capable of doing these shows because he's got a bit of a sore throat I reckon so I think that Iggy Pop will come back and be strong stronger even and and you know I reckon a week off and he'll be fine and if he's not he'll have to go and get an operation and he'll still be fine this guy's 75 years old and it take more than a, a little bit of pharyngitis to uh, derail the Iggy Pop train so get well soon Iggy absolutely brilliant work and keep doing that legend stuff that you're doing you know the legend stuff just keep doing that yeah nice one Justin Hawkins rides again again oh yeah don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell for notifications and uh, rest assured uh Iggy Pop is not, uh, he's no ordinary man. He'll be back. Nice one.